Okay, and anyway, my name is John Bruce. Uh, as, as mentioned, I'm a survivor of uh, head and neck cancer. Um, I'm actually uh, about four and a half years out. Uh, this is the second time that I've presented here in this auditorium, but it's nice to actually see some people here because we couldn't fill the first row here the first time. <laughs> Uh, my other presentation was on Cancer Bridges, and people can see it there, but so it was nice to be uh, asked back. Uh, I can give, a, give my viewpoints here. But the topic of the day is living your best life with cancer and beyond. And the example on the screen, there's nobody that I can think of in the world that could fit that definition better than Terry Fox. This is the monument in Thunder Bay. You know, there, there's an individual that lived it with cancer and beyond, and he's still living right now today in all of the activities that that basically resulted from from his being in the world. Um, you know, I tell you, cancer comes sit by me because. I, he's, Terry Foss is the epitome of, of this individual. Cancer is not a contagious disease, it's a disease. You know, you're, you're all right. You can come sit by me and you won't catch it. So, I, I wanted to really press that point there. We have hope. We feel a lot more hope today than we had in the past. Survival rates are all improving. It's great for the stats people. You got, uh, you know, 62% now are last in five years. I, personally, I really hate that five-year number because I'm getting near the five years, and then <laughs> what happens after that? One thing I have noticed, though, is since my experience with cancer, the taboo is fading. There's a lot more uh, communication regarding cancer. Uh, you know, a forum such as this is amazing. Uh, you go on social network sites and, uh, like Facebook and that, there are uh, chat pages or pages where you can post and get information. And people are having a real conversation about how they're feeling, what they're going through, and continuing on. 100,000 strong in Alberta is an amazing number. I, if, if I hadn't read it in black and white, there's no way I would have believed it. And that's probably a reason why we can start getting rid of the taboo. Yeah, it's cancer. It's something we can have a conversation around the water cooler at work with. Why am I here? I consider myself special. Some call it short bus special, but I am a survivor. I am, um, 2007, I was diagnosed, and I'm still here. Odds were I wasn't supposed to be here, but I made it, so I'm a survivor. December 2007, I went in for 17 hours of amazing surgery. The type of surgery that I went in for was developed and improved upon here at the U of A by doctors that are local to Edmonton, making me a very lucky individual. Chemotherapy in the spring of 2008, cisplatin, that was worse than death itself, but a lot of us that have gone through it understand the, the, the bad times, but it's a necessary evil. Sometimes you have to go through pain in order to come out the other side and, and understand just how good you're doing. Radiation in the spring of 2008, I got to the point from the, from the chemo that I was lucky to get a, a bed in this lovely uh, building but unlucky because there's not usually too many beds and you got to be in pretty bad shape before they take you. 
Six months later, though, I gained 13 pounds back, and I thought it's time to return to life. I went back to work full time and just rode that stubborn bus all the way there, right up to Fort McMurray. I was struggling to survive. Now looking back, I consider myself to be one of the most, I don't know, I was in complete denial. I don't know who I thought I was, but I went out as a forest officer back to Fort McMurray. A wildfire prevention officer was my position, and I was ready to go to work. The following summer, I ended up strep A bloodborne. Denial, living by yourself sometimes, you go into little depressive states, lowered immune, really 13 pounds. It was my will that got me back to work, but my body wasn't ready. So I got a second trach and a second peg tube and a second trip to ICU, and I had to learn how to swallow and speak twice over again. But Yet again, I survived. So I guess I'm living my best. <laughs> what happened next was, was yeah, uncertainty, hopelessness, physical changes, that every time you look in the mirror, you have to, you, you see all of the changes. Maybe a lot of people don't notice the scars and the disfiguration. But every time you look in the mirror, you see that. Fear of unknown, depression, and anxiety. Depression and anxiety got me about a year and a half ago really bad. I'd had waves of it and waves of it and waves of it, but it really hit me to the point where my health was in danger, so I had to leave, leave my place of employment for the third time. I sort of gave up. And I felt like I was drowning. This picture here, this is the Rapids of the Dead. I thought it was really good because it's up in Sl the Slave River uh, near Fort Smith. Not, not too many people make it out of that set of rapids. But then one day, um, I was just looking at my kids and I thought, hey, I got something good in my life. I got something to move forward with, I could grasp on something, and there is purpose in my life. I want to see these three individuals grow up to be the great people they can. I made a choice to move on with my life and not let everything that I went through drag me down. It's like this caption says, I have already been through hell. So give it your best shot. Not only will I survive, I will win. I thought it was the most awesome picture I could pull off of the, the internet. I don't know who the author is, but I stole it and I'm proud of it. <laughs> the, the, the fire within me burned again. Uh, my job was a wildfire prevention officer and fire behavior specialist. And I used to get to light things like this guy in the picture here. So I reached out and I got out. I took responsibility for me and I did the homework that was expected of me from the caregivers and health providers that helped me through that time in my life. They give you exercises and, and things to do because they know they're proven tools that help people. So when you get them, you should do them. Again, like I said, I started taking care of me. It was suggested that I had a pretty good story. Um, I'd overcome a lot of things, a lot of adversity, and people take inspiration out of that. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed because I don't think I deserve to be put up on a pedestal at times, but it's humbling and it's very honoring that people put me in the, that position. I went to therapy and, and it was suggested that I write the pain out of me. 
So I wrote a book. My Three Belly Buttons. <laughs> and the reason it's called that is so actually somebody yesterday told me it's three chances at life. You know, your first one is from the court when you're, when you're born. And then I got two further paid tubes, which, you know, they, they kept me going and kept me alive. So it was like two rebirths, I guess. I took a negative experience and I've tried to help others with it. Um, thus, that's one of the reasons I'm standing here today. I, I took the advice, I wrote my story out. People have told me that it's, it's a good story and they've been helped by it. It gives uh, different individuals a different perception of what a cancer patient goes through. And that's not just cancer patients themselves, but the caregivers, the ones, the family and friends around them. I just wrote it down like, this, we're sitting down having a coffee and uh, this was my experience, this is, this is how I felt. And I didn't hold nothing back, I just wrote the whole story out. And that honesty has paid me back in many times because of what people have said, how the book has helped them or touched them, or what experiences they're going through. I found some love and happiness in my world. You know, partly through writing my story out and helping others, but also with me getting on in my life. I met a lovely woman, Jeanette, and I'm, I'm one of the luckiest people in the world because I've got such support from family and friends that it's just unbelievable. And total strangers are supporting me too. Like the last person who bought my book was sitting in Australia here. Her husband's going through head and neck cancer. And the magical note that she wrote me is enough just to about make you cry. Today I'm strong. Or at least I think I am. <laughs> I have, I've accepted my new life's reality. As I said, I was a wildfire prevention officer. And I've been off the last year and a half. That career, 20, 22 years of my life that I worked towards is now gone. In the next three months, I'll know what my next career is. I'll either have to start completely over from scratch, or I'll get a role that I have a skill set that could maybe benefit, but with my new physical limitations, it'll be realistic for me. So I'm in a bit of a limbo, but at least I know within the next three months, as I found out this week, I'll be moving forward. Another thing that I look forward to in life is that although I like coming here and visiting some of the people here, I don't need to come here anymore as of last month to visit my doctor to determine am I still okay, is the checkups and all that. It's very scary unknown ground, but I'm looking forward to getting used to the idea of not having to come back and get prodded and poked and, and whatever else they can think of. <laughs> um, drop me a line sometime. My three belly buttons at homel.ca. I'm going to leave some bookmarks. They've got my address. Uh, I'll leave them during the coffee break out there where I can be approached. I have a good days and bad days, but the biggest thing now is that I, I'm not alone. I'm willing to reach out and grab a hand when I need it. And that was probably one of the hardest things I ever did, was reaching out, showing that I'm weak. But really, you're a lot stronger because you have the strength to show your weakness. You know, the analogy of a dog lying on his back with his feet up in the air to rub his tummy. He's basically giving himself out to you, showing his weakness, and hoping you'll help him out and take care of him. You can be a helping hand. That's something to move forward with. You can be a helping hand to yourself, but you can also be a helping hand to others around you. And that's... That's why I'm here today. I'm trying to be that helping hand. Um, that's basically my talk. 
I welcome being approached or, or having people ask me questions and chatting with me. And like I say on the email, I've got a Facebook page called My Three Belly Buttons. It's a, it's a group, uh, well, it's just a, a page for information. I put inspirational thoughts on there, and I also uh, update anytime I see uh, cancer information or different events or new things coming from all sorts of different pages that I like and follow. I post on there, and it's just information, right? And then people can keep spreading the word. Um, I do have one of my books today. And I noticed this, this girl sitting all by herself writing a whole bunch of notes, so I thought maybe she'd like to read it. <laughs>